faking identity. So, yes. People don't know who you are, so they don't treat you as you ought to be treated. Yes. Yes. In fact, the worst one is when you don't know who you are. Because of situations and circumstances, some people forget themselves. They don't know who they are again. Sorry, I didn't tell you to sit down, but I just feel like preaching. Mm -hmm. Can I go? They find the people, they forget themselves. Some people went to school. They know a lot of things, but just because of where they found themselves, if you see them, you think they never went to school. Some people, they got things that they can do, but just because of where they found themselves, they have lost themselves. Some people, where they're coming from, there are people that are appreciated. Mm -hmm. Then you come to a place where you are not appreciated. Oh, yes. Some people are people who have lived and they've been celebrated. Then you come to a place where you are ridiculed. Why? They have forgotten themselves. I thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, God. We give you praise, oh God. Thank you. Take all the glory. Amen. amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. People of God say better, amen. 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 I love that. God bless you. Take your seat. Amen. 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 First, I want to thank your pastor, Pastor James, for, 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 for not getting, you know, discouraged. I like this man's speech. He kept calling me and calling me and calling me, even though I, 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 I kept saying, listen, I'm very busy. I'm a busy man. I don't have time. I can't come to Luxembourg. You will call. You say, ah, but please just try and come. And I'm glad that I came. I'm really glad. I tried to talk to him. I tried to encourage him on phone. I've sent some of my men here before. Uh, the King James has been here. And uh, uh, my brother, Brother Brown, was one of our, you know, was with us. God bless you, Brother Brown. It's glad to see, I'm glad to see you leading the choir here today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, each and every one of you, 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 you are special before God. Amen. And I want you to understand something, people of God, that God has not forgotten you. Amen. As I was praying and I was saying, God, what am I going to speak to you, people? I always like God to talk to my heart. I always want God to give me a specific word for the moment. Amen. And I was just saying, what do I tell these people? I'm sure you've had many wonderful sermons. And I'm not here to impress you with a nice sermon. I'm here to try to speak God's heart to you this evening. And God said, tell them I have not forgotten them. Amen. Amen. And that I will remember them. Amen. Amen. And as I was, and, I, and, and you know what God says, He's remembering you. That means that your day of visitation is coming. Amen. Amen. But I pray you will not miss out on your day of visitation. Amen. Because it is one thing for God to visit, it's another thing for you to be present. Are you with me? Yes. Every man in his life, there is a day of visitation of God. Amen. God may not visit us all on the same day. That's why all of us, our blessings and our things don't all come on the same time. Are you with me? Yes. The Bible says time and chance happens to all. The battle is not to the strong. The race is not to the sweet. He said bread is not to the wise, nor riches to the men of understanding. But time and chance happens to all. Recognizing the timings of God and recognizing, you know, the, 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 the opportunities that God creates is another thing for man. And when your day comes, <laughs> even against you, your, your own doubt, God will prove himself. Amen. Yeah. Am I speaking to song? Yes. 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 And so God says, I will remember you. This was a word God kept speaking even to, you know, to the prophets, to the children of Israel. They had been carried away from Israel. And they were brought into Babylon, into captivity. And they were under the yoke and the bondage of slavery. And the Bible says they were crying. They were crying sometimes. If you remember the song, by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, and there we went. Huh? 
God will remember yeah. Zachary. You know, sometimes you look back, you remember. You remember, you say, this is not who I used to be. This is not where I am. You look back at your life again. You were expecting many more things. You were expecting great things. But the things you see are not the dead are the things that make you weep. Sometimes somebody could be smiling on the outside but crying on the inside. You know, there are those secret things that others may not see, God sees. The Bible says concerning the children of Israel. As there was a time they came into Egypt. When they came, when Joseph moved to Egypt, they came celebrating. They were people that were, were, were special people. In fact, they, they, they dwelt in a place that was called Goshen. And as they lived there, they were people that, you know, where they had the pride and the toast of Egypt. Because of the fame of Joseph. But the Bible says that there was a Pharaoh that came that did not know Joseph. And from that Pharaoh, things turned around. From that Pharaoh, things turned around. And people who had been celebrated became the people who had despised. But not only was it that they were people that were despised, it followed thereafter that they were people that now found themselves in subjugation, in oppression, and in slavery. You can imagine for 430 years living through the pains, the agony of slavery. And the Bible says that they were crying to God. They were crying to God. God, when are you going to save us? When are you going to deliver us? But much earlier, God had already spoken to Abraham. And he had declared to Abraham that I'm going to bless you, Abraham. And your own children, your descendants, I will take them into another land. It's there in the scripture. You see, let me tell you, whatever is happening to you is already in the program of God. Are you with me? So just be calm and keep your cool. You know, sometimes you don't understand. I, I, I think I need to show you this. I need to let you see. So you can know the truth that these were things that even though these people are living through it, God had already seen it. God had already known it. God had already programmed it. And God already had a plan. Tell someone, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. Afterward, they will come out 
with great possession. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried at a good old age in the fourth generation. In the fourth generation. So every generation is talking about a hundred years. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here for the sin of the Amorite has not yet reached its full measure for the sins of the Amorite. God is saying, listen, I'm going to take your people out and put them in a place, in the place they are staying there, because why? The place I've prepared for you, I'm taking some people out of that place, so that when I take them out, your people will come and take them <coughs> out of that place. I'm taking them out because I have a time of mercy, a time of giving for grace. For those people to be able to change, but I already know that they are they're having themselves, they're not changing. So when they, they are seen, if the cup is full, you know, a 400 days of grace, God gave the Amorites. But it was also a 400 years that the children of Israel were in a state of slavery and bondage. And God said, when that time is up, I will kick out the Amorites and your people will go in and take the land. Are you with me? Yes. And your people will go in and take the land. One of the things I want you to understand is that God is not, you know, uh, the, 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 the Bible says, God knows everything. Before the beginning, God knew the end. Am I speaking to someone? Yes. And that's what one of the things I want to encourage you today. If indeed as you were singing, you believed what you were singing. And I, I want you, if anything, I shared with the church at the beginning of the year. God gave me four, you know, four words to advise the people. With. Because this is a year of ultimate breakthrough Amen. And, and, and great achievement. Amen. I believe the word of God. Every time a man of God, a prophet of God speaks, I hold to those words. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, he said, believe the Lord thy God, you will be established. I said, believe his prophets and you will prosper. Why? Because God sends people, people who are serving him, he uses them as his oracle. To speak into the life of people. I am here not on my own. And I'm not speaking my words. And I'm not here to please you. Or to make you feel good. I am just open to the spirit of God. To speak through me. So that God today. May speak into the life of someone. <laughs> By the mouth of his prophets. The general was here of this mission. Of this, uh, you know, of this mission. God said this is a year of ultimate breakthrough. Breakthrough. And I believe the prophet of God. And I believe that God indeed is said to bring breakthrough to the people who will walk in his way. Am I speaking to someone? Yes. Now, four things God told me to share with the people in church. And I will say it to you too. Because you need to put it into practice in your walk. In your walk. You see, if you want one of the things, you were talking about covenant keeping God. God is a covenant keeping God. You see, if you have a covenant with God, that is, you have a walk with God. And if you have a walk with God, it means that now God is your divine partner. Amen. Are you with me? When you are into a divine partnership with God, you can be certain whatever happens to you will also affect God. And God is not a loser. Are you with me? He will always win. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you are into a covenant, these lessons, these four things I want to give you, I want you to pay attention to me. Number one. Number one says put God first in whatever you're doing. Some of us came here, we're here to pursue our own survival. All we think about is about us. And if all that you're going to do is just only about yourself, then you'll find out that you, you have, you, you'll be on your own. Are you, are, are you with me? If, uh, if everything is just about me, then you can be certain you're on your own. Put God first. Put God first. Put God first. When you put God first, it means you have faith in God. We live in a time where people's faith, day by day, seems to be evaporating. 
People have more faith in themselves than they have faith in God. People have more faith, you know, in man than they have faith in God. People have more faith, you know, in, 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 in things than they have faith in God. In fact, people have more faith in situations and circumstances than they have faith in God. When you put God faith, you put God first, regardless of whatever happens, you will say, whatever happens, I will continually believe God, look up to God, and trust in God. You see, number one, he says, when you put God first, you have faith in God. When you have faith in God, then you will also, it will, it will go beyond just only, and you know, just only just say, I have faith. Because the Bible says, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Your faith level is determined by your word level. How much of God you know will determine, you know what? Your faith in God. Put God first. You see, when you put God first, you have faith in God. You, as you know God, you will fear God. Are you with me? One of the many reasons why things don't work out well for many of us is because we are neither here nor there. <coughs> With our mouth we praise God, but our heart is full of evil and wicked schemes that cannot reconcile themselves together. The Bible says, "With their mouth, with their lips, they praise me, but their heart is far away from me." Are you with me? When a person has faith in God, one of the things it does is that it helps the person also to fear God. The fear is not the kind of fear that paralyzes you. It's not the kind of fear that makes you to be shaking and all that. No, the fear that you have of God is a holy fear, a reverential fear. There are things that you will not do because of God. Even if it is, you know, you don't fear man. He said, but even if I don't fear man, I fear God. Am I speaking to someone? Yes. You see, there are some things that we do with our own self that we bring, you know, harm and evil our way. When a man fears God, there are things he will not do. He knows that everything does not end with him, that everything that is beyond him, he can commit to God. Am I speaking to someone? Yes. Right now. He said, I'll tell you the truth. It is not that the hands of God is too short to see. Or is it that the ears of God is dead that he cannot hear? But many times the people who are calling upon God, their work with God is not right. Am I speaking to someone? Yes. If you are going to be sincere with yourself, you know we grew up in religion. We are used to religion. In fact, for some of us, it is a way of life. So somebody has been brought up, he has been cooked in church. So it is only normal to want to go to church. And then you come and say, but then you're, you're just doing this thing, you're going through all the motions, but you don't really have to go. A man needs to fear God. A man needs to put God first. The fear of God, the Bible says, is what? The beginning of wisdom. Somebody thinks that that is stupid. But the truth is that go and take all the degrees in the world. Go and have all the knowledge in the world. If you don't fear God, you will not have the wisdom that will reign in the world. Sometimes you can be so full of your smartness and your wiseness and your cunningness. And let me tell you how many of us, it is because of our wiseness we have got into the trouble that we are. Am I speaking to someone? Yes. yes. Just before I left Amsterdam, they saw the radio on the television, some of the guys, you know, I call them, I warn them, I caution them, I preach to them, I call them in private, those are bound out that doing all those things. I said, please think, get off the street. Get off the street. You people know what I mean? Yes, I don't. Get off the street. All these people want to be doing drugs, all these people want to be doing porn. Even if I'm the one who owns that country, I wouldn't want in my country, Nigeria, to go and see somebody, a Kanaman or somebody, or someone or someone coming to be doing, committing the uh, You wouldn't like that? No. Let's face it, would you like that? No. no. Some people will say the situation and the circumstances that's making it. No. 
God will make a way. Amen. I said, God will make a way. Amen. God makes way where there are no way. Yes. When you come to a place where you say, God, okay, I will die then. If you can't do anything. God shows himself. Yes. yes. How many of you, before you got here, you know what God did? Incredible things that happened that would not have happened. If not for God. Am I speaking? Yes. Yes. How come you forget that? But you know, you find out that someone doesn't fear God. So you don't fear God, you just, you know, people, they say they, they don't know God, but they don't fear God. Let me tell you the truth. A man who fears God, a man whose ways pleases God, the Bible says God makes his enemies to be at peace with him. That thing is not just written as a joke. It happens. It happens. Because you see why, when God takes an interest in you, when God is delighted in you, if any man curses you, you will be cursed. Yes. If any man blesses you, you will be blessed. Yes. Why? Because God is interested in you. Yes. When you have a fight, that person is fighting God. Mm-hmm. When, 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 and when you are you're, you're being uh, supported, God is being supported. Are you with me? That's why you know when you are a man of God and you are really serving God, people will be running to want to bless you. I must give you some. Praise God. Hallelujah. So part of the thing about putting God first is that not only is it that you have faith in God, but you fear God. You see, the Bible says that the secrets of the Lord are with those who fear Him. He will, he will reveal his covenant to them. And then I was it, he will establish his covenant to them then. Honestly, I am telling you, this is not a joke, this is true. This is true. You may look like a fool, but you will end up becoming the wise one. Amen. And the Bible says, you know, that it is the foolish things of the earth that God even takes delight in. And that's why when you begin to see who God will use, he's not the wisest, he's not the smartest, or the most able. You will look at yourself in the circumstances that you are. If you really know who you are in God, this nation will celebrate you as a believer. Right now, some of you are seen as problems, as liabilities, as burdens, and all those ones. But if you know who you are in God, and you walk your walk with God, Believe me, this nation will celebrate you. Because why? Instead of becoming a problem, you become a solution for one. Amen. There are some of us that people see, the tag they put on us is problem. Hey, see problem, go. See problem. Meanwhile, you were born to be a solution. Tell somebody, I'm not a problem. I'm not a problem. I'm a solution. I'm a solution. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody has a, has a problem. When you go and nobody likes problem. How many people are like problem? Nobody. Nobody likes problem. These people are a problem. These people are going to be confusion. These people are going to. But when you fear God and you're walking with God, not only is it that that they, you know there are certain things that happen. You see, one of the things God does in Psalms 5 verse 12, the Bible says, you know, you know. I, I, you know, I, I, you know that, that, that God will surround you with his favor as a shield. In fact, favor becomes your shield. God is said to favor you. Amen. And you know what about favor, people of God? Favor is made up of two words. I mean, when we say favor, we simply mean that you are qualified for what you are not qualified for. Come on! <laughs> Your disqualification becomes the basis for your qualification. Yeah. Why? Because favor is speaking. Uh-huh. When you are favored, favor means to when you are when you are, when you do not merit something and you get it. Some of us, if it is by merit, you will never get what you are looking for. Some of us, if you look at all that has been done, you are not qualified for anything. But when God favors you. They have looked at everything. They say, we have seen you have told lie. This is not true. That is not true. Everything is not correct. 
but we'll give it to you. Amen. Amen. So for favor makes possible what is impossible. Fear God. If you fear God, you will trust God. I'm still on point one. If you fear God, you will trust God. You see, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. One of the things many people lack in life is direction. You see the man going somewhere. And we were coming from upstairs. If we didn't know how the direction to this place, we would have been going around and around the circle. I put on the navigator. We just put in the address. It was the address. We knew the destination where we were coming to. I put in the navigator. We just press it right in there. And the whole thing was just telling us this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. And we did not waste time. In fact, we programmed fastest route. He took us through, he cut all the shortcut. We don't go through any town where there be ghost road. We don't go through any traffic. He just took us there, there, and he came. He was at the station where I said, where are you? I'm on the street. Yeah. We're right there. Why are you looking for me at the station? I'm not lost. Why? Because there was direction. A navigator navigated us to this place. Yeah. <laughs> and the one who created you will know how to navigate you. You see, but the problem too many times, just like when the navigators navigate and I would say, no, 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 no. He said, go this way, you go that way. He said, this road is not looking too nice. I like that road, you go that way. And when you begin to do like that, the journey will be long. Mm -hmm. the Some of us, the reason why the journey is long is because we have been navigating. You are, you are, you are looking at situation. You are looking at circumstance. You are, you, are, you are looking at things. There are many issues in many people's lives here. Mm -hmm. Beyond the issue of the state, there are issues, family issues, relationship issues, decisions you are making in your life. That without a clear sense of direction, you'll be making wrong choices. That in, in years to come, you'll be regretting. Because you think you know and you are smart enough. And you will not hearken to the counsel of God. And so you try to go on a short court, it turns into a long court. Trust the Lord with all your heart. And don't lean. On your understanding. I love the way the Bible puts it when it says, Don't lean on your understanding. He said, God says, I know you have some understanding. And it is not a crime to have some understanding. But what I am telling you, son, is that don't totally depend upon what you think you know. Because what you know is limited. Mm -hmm. I was talking with your pastor. He was telling me, you know what the situation here? This is this, this is that, this country is bad. They don't give paper, they don't do this work. I said, thank you for all the information. I said, now, those are the facts. But the fact is fact, but truth is truth. They're two different things. A fact is the representations of what you see. But the truth is what stands and cannot be changed. It's a fact maybe they don't give paper. But it's not a truth that they cannot give you a paper. Because why? With God, nothing shall be possible. Oh, yes. And the truth of God stands. Because why? You know, facts can change. It may be a fact today that they're not taking any money. But that doesn't mean that forever they will not take any money. And that doesn't mean that there cannot be an exception for somebody. And that doesn't mean that God cannot make somebody to be favored. Give yes. out of the Lord and the case be made for him. Oh, yes, Am I speaking to someone? Yes. And that is truth because with God, nothing shall be impossible. Oh, yes, yes. And facts cannot change truths because truths, they abide forever. Am I speaking to someone? Yes. When you begin to know that, then you know that facts are limited. 
limited by situations, limited by circumstances, limited by time. But truth are timeless. Am I making sense to someone? Yes. Now, when you are depending on your understanding, you are depending on the limited knowledge that you have. Maybe it's about marriage. Maybe it's about a relationship. You think you know what you like. And you, on the basis of the limited knowledge you have, you want to plan for a lifetime. Based upon who you are. You know, some of you, maybe because you don't see where God is taking you to, all you see is only now. You base your life decision on the circumstances of now. And it can prove to be dangerous in years to come. Some look back again with regret and say, oh, if I knew, I would not have taken that decision. Am I speaking to someone? Yes. And that's why, even for things you need to do, steps that you are taking, you need the direction of God. You need to be able to go before God. You need to be able to come into God and say, what does your word say? What are you speaking by your prophets? What are the counsel that I need to get? And then you plan your part. You plan your step in the way that God will bring you to your destination.